All right, guys, so today we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to learn how to properly connect the footing ground. This is the concrete encased electrode. Often we call it the oofer ground. Whatever you want to call it, there's a couple ways that the code allows us to satisfy this ground. We're going to learn later this week that we have to bond all available and use all available grounding electrodes that are in the system. So if there is concrete footings, concrete slab, you're going to be required to utilize it as a grounding electrode. And there's a couple different ways that you can do it. So the first way that you can do it is you can connect a piece of number four bare copper and you can connect it straight to the rebar grid. Now there's a couple codes that we have to watch out here. The first one um, states here in part one that it's got to be at least a half inch in diameter rebar and it must be made of bare or zinc galvanized or other electrically conductive coated steel reinforcing bars or rods. So what it's saying is it's got to be conductive rebar that's at least a half inch in diameter and it must be at least 20 foot long. Now it can be one 20 foot, you know, 20 foot long piece, but it often is going to be pieces that have been bent and tied together or they're running straight and tied together. And how they can be tied together is they can either be welded together or you can just use those ties. So your concrete guys come in and make their footings. They put those little rocking chairs down that lift it two inches off the ground. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But they put those little chairs down and then they tie their pieces to steel together with just wire tie. That's perfectly acceptable. We have to have at least 20 foot of that rebar continuous. It can go around corners. It can go around bins. But it must be connected together either welded or with those tie bars. So what we're going to do at that point, as long as we've established that, is that we can then go to where we feel like our service is going to be on that structure. So if the service is going to be on the east corner, we'll go over to the east corner of the, the rebar grid and we'll attach a piece of number four. Now how we attach it is with a fitting like one of these. Now you can use any listed fitting that's rated for concrete and direct burial. Um, you know, and you, you're going to want to use one that's listed for the purpose, but you can connect it like this. So you go over to the east corner if that's where your service is going to be and you're going to attach at any point on that rebar system. You don't have to run 20 foot of copper in the ground. You don't have to do anything. You just have to get in the ground, but all the metal components of that setup there have to be encased in at least two inches of concrete. And how that is achieved is through those little chairs that they put the steel on. That's going to give you two inches off the ground, and then there must be a minimum of two inches on top of that. That's the way the code states it. It must be encased in a minimum of two inches, meaning two inches from every direction. So wherever you make that connection, you're just going to use one of these tight fittings and you're going to connect it to the steel and then you're done. You don't have to do anything else. You just want to make sure that you leave enough of that number four out of the ground and put it in a safe place in order that you can go to to your um, system later, whether it's a, a you know meter disconnect combo or whatever the first point of disconnect is for you. And yesterday we learned, then you're done. If you have an oofer ground, a footing ground, you're not required to drive any supplemental electrodes as far as being able to satisfy the initial grounding electrode system. All right, so now let's go ahead and go on to the second way that you can satisfy this code. You do not have to connect to the steel if you do not want to. You can make your own concrete encased electrode. What you will do is you will take 20 feet of bare number four and you're going to set it down where the concrete's going to be poured. Now you have to still make sure that you're maintaining two, maintaining two inches off the bottom of the ground and two inches from the top of the concrete. So you have to be encased in two inches of concrete, but you can literally take a roll of number four and you can lay it out in the footing and make sure that you're two inches off the ground and two inches from the top and then stub the rest of that wire. Now this is in addition to the 20 feet. So you gotta have 20 feet down in the concrete and then you have to have the additional wire coming out of the concrete uh, long enough to reach your you know, first point of disconnect wherever that's going to be for you. So um, one thing I do wanna note that the code book states is that we're only required to connect one of the available footing grounding electrodes. So technically by code, you would have an available electrode in the grid system. That would be one available one. And then also you've made a new one if you do it this way with the 20 foot of copper. Technically you would have two of those, but the codes made a provision that you only have to connect one of them. So you can 
honestly, if you've already got a grid, don't waste 20 feet of copper and just connect at any you know local point near your system. But if you wanted to go through the rigmarole um, and you wanted to you know put 20 foot of copper down in there, you're not required to connect both of those. You would not be required to connect the grid and the 20 foot of copper. So just to recap, the most practical way to do it, as long as there is structural steel that is at least a half inch thick, is you're just gonna take a piece of number four and one of these listed clamps, and you're going to connect to the grid and then leave enough out of the ground to get to your first point of disconnect. Another way that you can do it is you can take a physical piece of 20 foot, uh, 20 foot of that copper, make sure it's enough to get down in the footing and have 20 foot down in the footing, and then make sure you have enough beyond that 20 foot to get back to your first point of disconnect. Um, I'm the electrical code coach. I'm here just to see you win. Let's go ahead and get to it. This is the electricians in action.